Welcome to Living on Mercy Lane. It's Miss Cole here with another lesson for our kids' church. Hope that you've enjoyed your Easter weekend and that you're still celebrating the extremely awesome, very good, incredible, good news that we learned last week. Jesus is alive. Today we're going to continue that lesson by sharing some more good news. After Jesus was risen from the grave, guess what? He continued to do things that we would expect Jesus to do with his disciples. He ate with them. He talked with them. He taught them more about the things of God. And a matter of fact, Jesus hung out with his disciples for 40 more days just to make sure that they knew that Jesus was who he said he was. But you know what? Jesus also did some very amazing things that weren't typical of what Jesus could do before he went to the cross. He would just appear to his disciples who were sitting in locked rooms. Can you imagine? All of a sudden, there Jesus was in the middle of them. Well, as a matter of fact, he was two of Jesus' good friends, disciples who had been learning about Jesus, after the crucifixion, they were walking back to where they lived in Emmaus, and they were talking about all the things that had happened. And guess what? All of a sudden, Jesus comes up alongside them and talks to him, and he's learning and he's listening. And then they, Jesus gets to Emmaus with the guys, and the guys are ready to go to their house, and Jesus is going to walk on. But he goes with them to their house, and they break bread. And guess what? After Jesus broke the bread, he disappeared. And the men were like, did not our hearts burn when we listened to him? They knew Jesus was alive, just like the ladies had been saying Jesus was alive. Well, I brought some fun and interesting items with me today to help us learn the lesson. I've got my pretzel sticks, my gummy bears, some marshmallows, and a few more surprises. How about we get started? I'm going to be reading in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 and 20. And then I'm going to be reading from the book of Acts, verse, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. So in John, chapter 20, verse 19, it starts like this. It says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. How about we set the stage? I'm going to use my pretzel sticks. So, Jesus, it says, the disciples, not Jesus, the disciples were in a locked room. Maybe it was the room where they had just celebrated Passover. So I'm going to use my pretzel sticks and I'm going to create my very own locked room. It's not going to be any entry. It's all going to be locked up tight. So here we go. Here's the room. And it says the disciples were there. So I'm going to add my gummy bears because they'll be the disciples. So they're sitting and they're talking. They're discussing the things that had been happening. It says the doors were locked. So I'm thinking they were probably scared of all the things that had happened. And they were, you know, wondering what's going to happen to them. So they're all sitting there and... We know Jesus at this time had 11 close disciples. But there was probably some ladies like Mary and Martha. They were there. Maybe Lazarus was there too. So they're all kind of hanging out and they're discussing the things that happened. And the doors are locked because they don't want anybody to get in. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jesus appears right in the center of them and says, Peace, be still. Mine don't quite stand. But there's Jesus standing in the middle of them. And he says again, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So Jesus is in there. He's showing them his hands, his side. He's talking to them. And he's telling them, be at peace. Everything's under control. God hasn't abandoned them. Be at peace. So after he just suddenly appeared, guess what? He suddenly disappeared. So the disciples are hanging out. And then if I go over a page in my Bible to Acts chapter 1, it says, In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, after Jesus died on the cross, he presented himself to them. Remember? Ta-da! Here's Jesus. He's popping in and popping out. 
Ta -da! and popping in and popping out, okay? And gave them convincing proof that he was alive. He appeared to them for a period of over 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So just like Jesus had done before the crucifixion, he was again explaining the kingdom of God to his disciples. On one occasion while he was, oh, here it is, eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And there you go. So Jesus popped in. He had a meal with them. He shared the kingdom of God. He told them, I want you to stay here and wait because I've got a promise from the Father. That comforter I promised I would send, he's coming to you. And then it says in verse 6, they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Remember, some of them were thinking it's just about here on earth. Jesus was talking about God's heavenly kingdom, so they wanted clarity. But this time, guess what? They weren't in there. They were not in the house. They were out on a mountainside. So this is where my marshmallows are going to come in. I need to build a mountain. So mountains are tall and pointy. So I'm going to do, stick some there, stick one there. There we go. Get my mountain going. Whoops. This mountain's going to have a short side. All right. So there's my mountain. And they're all gathered around there. And they're listening to Jesus. And Jesus is telling them the story. Telling him what he expects them to do. Where's Jesus? There's Jesus. Okay, remember? Let's see, which way does... Yeah, that way. Jesus telling them, wait here in Jerusalem. Don't leave until you get what the gift my father promised. So you to stay there. And after he said these things, guess what? He walked up on the mountain. And you know what was there? It was a cloud. A big fluffy cloud. And Jesus went up on it. And she, the cloud took Jesus up into the sky. And then there was no more Jesus. They didn't see him anymore. And so as the disciples, they're all, here's, here's one of the disciples, looking up in the sky, wondering, where did Jesus go? Where did he go? Two men, it says, um, Verse 7, Jesus' reply to them about the kingdom. It's not for you to know the times and dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you're going to receive that power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said that, he was taken up in the cloud. And taken up before their very own eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking directly, because they wanted to still see him, into the sky as he was going, when suddenly, there they are, now that's the part, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. There's this, the lesson from Acts chapter 1 and the little portion of John chapter 20. So Jesus has now returned to heaven, but guess what? Before he did that, he gave us a job. And he said that our job was to do what? To get the power from the Holy Spirit and then go be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. So now we've got a job. Jesus gave us a job. We're to go and tell others the good news of Jesus. Will you do that for me this week? Will you tell others about the good things God has done for you? Will you share that Jesus loves people so very much and he wants to have a relationship with them? How about we pray so we have power so that we can do that? Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you died and rose again and you were alive and showed yourself to the disciples. 
Thank you that you gave us a job to do. We're to be your witnesses. Help us to be that witness. Help us to share the good news of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Remember, stay in the word, stay in prayer, and stay connected. Bye.